Okay, for 10B, I have another one of these. This time the numbers are being multiplied together. So it still doesn't matter if you're dividing or multiplying, you're just gonna take all the factors, all the factored pieces and set them equal to zero. So what'll make this part zero will be negative one. What makes this zero is gonna be a three. So I have x is equal to negative one and three. Now, this time I'm gonna solve it by using the number line method. So I showed you the, the table method uh, in 10a, and so now, now I'll show you the, uh, this method here. Now if you're gonna do a number line method, you're gonna still put the, the numbers on a number line from smallest to largest, and you're still gonna pick your test values. And like I showed on the first example, I'm purposely putting these values, I'm circling them, putting them below, so when I write my answer, I don't accidentally use the negative two, zero, or four as part of my answer, I wanna use the negative one and three. So, when I take the test number, I'm now gonna put it into the entire thing at once. So I can say I'm gonna test negative two, and I'm gonna do negative two plus one, negative two minus three squared. And again, I'm only concerned about whether I get a positive or a negative number that I'm gonna put here. So as a result, what'll happen is I get a negative number here, this will give me a positive number, result's gonna be a negative. So I'm gonna put a negative there for the negative one. Next, I'm going to test zero. I put zero into the, the pieces here. Okay, so I get a positive here, and a square always gives me a positive. So positive and a positive will give me a positive when I multiply these together. That's a plus sign, goes there. Now I'm gonna test four. Okay, so test four. So I have four plus one, four minus three squared. This is a positive number. This will be a positive number. When you multiply those together, you still get a positive number as a result. So I get a plus right here. So now that I got, th this is gonna be my final sign configuration. If you were to do this with the table method, you would actually get this same result across the top of the table if you did it that way. So now, uh, now that I have that complete, I'm ready to indicate my answer. This is a greater than zero, and greater than zero means that I'm looking for the positive regions. Now, if I were to write my answer as negative one to infinity, it would actually be wrong, okay? Let's talk about the reason why. Now, what happens when I put three into here? Well, if I put three into the original equation, I'll get a zero here, zero times anything is zero. I'll end up with zero is greater than zero. That's not a true statement. So therefore, I cannot include three as my answer. Now, what if it was greater than or equal to zero? Well, if it was greater than or equal to zero, then I could include, have that as one interval from negative one to infinity, because then I would have zero is greater than or equal to zero, which would be a true statement. But because I got a greater than here, negative three cannot be included because I don't get a true statement. Therefore, when I write my answer, I need to split this up. I need to go from negative one to three, and then from three to infinity. So I'm splitting it up. I'm not including the three uh, as part of my answer, again, because three does not make this a true statement. Zero is not greater than zero. So therefore, I need to split it up like this. That would be your final answer.